Hi, everybody. Today's episode is all about ammonia and MEA. Ooh, one of my favorite topics. So excited. This is something that comes up all the time for us as hairdressers. We get very confused out there in the marketplace because we hear about ammonia products, ammonia free, ammonia is bad, there's MEA in this, there's MEA in that, and how does it work? So we're going to dig deep. We're going to ask Val all the questions are we've always wanted to know about these different ingredients and be better and more proficient behind the chair with them. So Val, tell us a little bit about ammonia versus MEA. Absolutely. Ammonia and MEA are alkalizers. That's why they're in hair color. You want to create that high pH environment and alkaline environment. And really the best things to do that in hair color are ammonia and monoethanolamine, which you can often see as just ethanolamine on a label, also known colloquially as MEA. They also work really well, not just because they're alkaline, but they're really small and can easily penetrate into the hair fiber to help create that reaction with hydrogen peroxide, bleaching out the melanin, Bye. and creating the alkaline environment necessary for oxidative dyes to couple mm. together. So with ammonia, recently I've been hearing so much about it being vilified in the mm -hmm. place of color that you know it causes issues in the hair it causes issues on the skin what are some myths that you can debunk about ammonia ammonia is a gas that's what's great about it that's also what's bad about it if you don't like the smell of ammonia I personally like it it's how I knew I was meant to do hair <laughs> color it was mm, I love a oxidizing bowl of hair color but it is a gas so it goes into the hair as a liquid as part of the hair color cream it does its job and then it evaporates into the air and that's why you can smell it. That's why people don't like it. They think it's bad for the hair because, oh, it's something I can smell, it's really obtrusive. We know that ammonia has a very high pH on the hair fiber and therefore must be uh, maybe corrosive, caustic. I've heard all sorts of things, but the fact that it's a gas is also what's great about it. It goes into the hair fiber, it does its job, and then it gets out of there Bye. and you just have the hair colorant left in the hair. With MEA, MEA is not a gas, it's a liquid. It penetrates into the hair fiber, does its job, and then kind of stays there and just hangs out hey. forever. People think MEA is healthier because you can't smell it and that is actually a myth. Oh, fascinating. So people are asking me often about ammonia being bad for the hair. <gasps> I think sometimes with that, it being vilified, manufacturers are kind of using that to their advantage in order to be able to use the marketing that it causes reactionary issues with mm -hmm. the skin, that people can get allergic reactions. Where I personally in my professional career have never had an actual allergic reaction with a customer or a client with ammonia. So can somebody actually have an ammonia allergy? It would be very uncommon if they did. I don't have the actual number of incidents within the industry, but ammonia is naturally occurring in our bodies and in our blood, so I would be hard pressed to see that. People think it, with hair color because it does have that high pH. Yes, the ammonia is providing that high pH, but uh, that's the reason it's irritating. It's not necessarily the ammonia. And in terms of you know, being irritated by something is completely different than being allergic to something, which is a systemic immune response within the body. What I've noticed with these different uh, manufacturers, it's almost like they're using MEA as a replacement for ammonia. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's more of a marketing ploy to help kind of take the person away from the ammonia. But we have this in order to fulfill the need of a permanent hair color that would be ammonia free. Do you find that that's happening in the market with hair color right now? Well, in terms of alkalizers, really your two choices when you're talking about permanent hair color is ammonia or MEA. Ammonia is so effective, you use very low quantities of it, very low. It seems like you're using a lot because of the odor, but you actually are not, in terms of a formulation point of view as a chemist, you're not really using that much ammonia. When you have to use MEA, sometimes you have to use up to five times the amount of the ammonia wow. that you would use to get the same effect. Ammonia is really great because it also works synergistically with hydrogen peroxide to lighten the hair fiber by removing that natural melanin pigment. 
but MEA does not have that same efficacy in hair color formulation. So you have to use a whole lot more to get the action going of the alkalinity that you need, but then you're also not getting the same lightening effect. So sometimes when you use MEA, the hair is a little bit less vibrant than if you did ammonia hair color because you're not getting that natural bump in the hair. When it comes to that MEA replacing ammonia and permanent hair color, it, it seems like it would need to have a lot in there in order to get great coverage, to get the levels of lift that they are, are mentioning that you may be able to get in this permanent line. Would that be true? That is accurate. To get the same deposition, to get the same coverage, you have to use a whole lot more MEA than you would have ammonia. And as a chemist, I don't like that because MEA above a certain point can be irritating to the skin. It is a sensitizer, which is not good. Ammonia is not uh, an irritant in that same sense. It's not gonna cause the dermatitis that MEA can. And also, given that MEA does not leave the hair fiber, you're leaving a whole lot of alkalizer behind that's not getting neutralized or removed after the coloring service, which can be really detrimental to future coloring services. Also, people think MEA is less damaging than ammonia, and that's absolutely not the case. Procter & Gamble did an excellent study published in 2014 in the Journal of Cosmetic Science where they looked at repetitive use of permanent hair colors using ammonia and monoethanolamine MEA, and they found that MEA looked great the first time, but over subsequent dyeing with it, it actually had up to 80% more damage for hair protein than ammonia-based hair color did. So, yeah, which one would you use? It's true. I can see that being, being so much from what you're saying. And as far as MEA goes as a, a chemical that we would earn, in this case, I guess, an alkalizer for the hair. I've always understood it that it doesn't alkalize as much as ammonia, so therefore the dye intermediates cannot enter the hair as deep. Is that accurate? That it is not capable of opening it up as much, the cuticle? No, I would say that's not the case because really to get the penetration, yes, you need a certain level of alkalinity, which MEA can provide. And usually on a permanent hair color, you're using enough MEA to get the same alkalinity as ammonia-based hair color. Really, I think the difference is in the ability of the ammonia to interact with the natural pigment, so you're getting a bit of a tonal difference or maybe even a deposition difference. But also, MEA, because it remains in the hair, it does change the internal chemistry of the hair fiber, and you may get some different tonal shifts. Sometimes when people have really damaged ends of the hair and you use an MEA-based hair color on it, you can see a little bit of ashiness or coolness to it. That's the chemistry of the hair and the MEA interacting with that with the dyes. When it comes to working with MEA, is it better suited for demi-permanent end results versus permanent? I really like MEA as a demi-permanent hair color, like our Crema XG, because with a demi-permanent hair color, you're not using a whole lot. You want just enough alkalinity to swell the hair fiber and get the oxidative dyes in to react with the hydrogen peroxide, and no more than that. So we're not using really high levels of MEA. As I said, it's just what you need to get the job done and leave the hair looking really shiny and beautiful. That sounds great because when we're working with Lightener, for instance, if we have a guest that we've used MEA on or they have come in, they're coming in with color history and we know that they've been using that type of color, mm -hmm. then we, a lot of times I recommend strand testing first mm -hmm. to see what is going to happen with that hair. Is it going to lift evenly? Is it even going to budge, especially if mm -hmm. there's a lot of overlap? Do you recommend that uh, we continue to do that with the hair if we know that it's been touched with MEA, just to be sure? Absolutely. The challenge is most consumers don't know what's been used on the hair in the past. If you have a new guest, it's very difficult to tell what's in there. A strand test may be valuable for that. With someone that you know that has had MEA in the hair, it's not a color that you can just do whatever you want and it works out. Understanding how MEA works in the hair how it works in coloring, how it works in recoloring, it's really valuable to having a good second look. Because the MEA is living in the hair from color to color, it's important to know when to overlap to refresh the ends. Should you be overlapping to refresh the ends to avoid extra alkalinity and a different color from mid shaft to end. So it's very important to do that homework up front with a strand test to figure out what you should be doing in that reapplication. 
When it comes to ammonia, I know oftentimes people like to, or hairdressers, even our customers sometimes at home will color their own hair, come in to us after they've already mm -hmm. colored their own hair repetitively with overlapping ammonia, ammonia, ammonia. So we know as hairdressers the hair will feel a certain way, but as a hairdresser ourselves, should we avoid continued use of ammonia on say the regrowth and then pulling through every time? Should we always reach for a demi-permanent to refresh the mid lengths and ends? And even more specifically, when working with pre-lightened hair, sometimes we reach for an ammonia-based mm -hmm. toner or refinement. When would you recommend to maybe not? Or mm -hmm. would it be okay all the time with a low developer? That's an excellent question. You know, I mentioned MEA in that Procter & Gamble study was found to be more damaging to the hair fiber than ammonia over consecutive uses. That doesn't mean ammonia is ultra safe, right? You're still doing a chemical process on your hair, you're still damaging it. So when you go to do that refresh, I would ask yourself, okay, what is the health of the guest's hair and what is my end goal in mind? I would only use an ammonia color, and again, I'm not a licensed cosmetologist, it's just you know what I would do in the lab if you, we traded places right. for a day. What I would do is say, do I need to use an ammonia-based color? Ammonia is excellent when you need to bump that pigment out of the hair or, or bump some of the color that's already in the hair, and you need that extra little push. It's not necessary every time. When you overlap ammonia and ammonia and ammonia, yes, it, it is still damaging. You're doing a chemical service, so ask yourself, do I need that extra push with the ammonia? Or if you can get away with using a Demi Permanent like Crema XG or the Demi for a glossy conditioned uh, look to the hair, I would definitely reach for that over an ammonia based color. It's all about what end look you want in mind. I love that you just said that Val. I know for myself in training purposes with working with hairdressers, I always recommend a couple of things. It's really how long is the hair going to accept the color for. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a permanent end result on somebody who's already has previously colored hair, you're really only looking at demi-permanent, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's there's nothing living in the hair any longer other than artificial color. When it comes to pre-lined hair, maybe I've done foil work, mm -hmm. and I want to do a base adjustment or a base break, and I want to soften the natural canvas, that's when I reach for my, maybe my ultra toners. It has a small amount of ammonia. I'm able to get that soft lift of that natural canvas, and that really works well for me. Yeah. But it's almost like, again, knowing the why, choosing the right tool for the job, and I think if we can remember that as hairdressers and everything that you just mentioned about both of these alkalizers, that's huge for us. So thank you so much, Val. We thank hope you. that this really helped you because I know it helped me in working with Val and having these discussions previously has made me a better colorist and we really want that for you as well. Please comment below and make sure you ask any of your questions or give us feedback. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. Bye.